And who says what? Okay. Okay. See, we're not scripted. <laughs> we just wing it. Yeah. Today we're going to show you our trip to Sedona, yes, the Sed Sedona area. Sedona, Arizona. Mm -hmm. That came after our visit in New Mexico. Yeah, Sedona was freaking beautiful. Right. We didn't get a campsite in Sedona. Mm -hmm. We stayed just outside of Sedona in a little town called Camp Verde. Yeah, and we did that because we wanted to kind of be between there and Jerome. We heard Jerome was really cool. The campground we chose was Verde River Campground. You have arrived at your destination on the right side. And is 30 miles to get to Sedona and 20 miles to get to Jerome. Yeah, it was a good central location. There wasn't really much to do right there, but that wasn't the point. The point was to be able to take Lucille up to Sedona and over to Jerome, and we did that. We did. When we reserved our campsite, we were a little bit nervous about it because there weren't the best reviews online for this campground, but then we saw that it was under new management, mm -hmm. so we decided to go ahead and take the risk and stay there, and it was a good choice for us. Yeah, it worked out really well. Mm -hmm. And the staff was great. And the park was great. It had a pool. It was too cold to use it, but it had a pool. Mm -hmm. And it had putt-putt, and it had a nice fenced-in dog area. Daisy goes nuts yeah. in the dog park. You want to see what Daisy does in the dog park? Usually, she's just staring at us. And the sights were decent size. Yeah. I mean, it was a really all you could ask for. The site for. had some shade, which was mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, thankfully, because the other one didn't have any at all. Yeah. So we got lucky there. One thing that Sedona is pretty well known for is its spiritual quality and its vortexes. I had never heard of a vortex other than like, you know, getting sucked down a drain or something. <laughs> Apparently these are areas where positive energy is more concentrated and it's like supposed to be healing and meditative. One day after work, we decided we were just gonna check one of these vortexes out mm -hmm. and we decided to go to the airport road vortex. He's gotta clean off the snack crumbs. His finger. <laughs> Little after work adventure. Yeah. Gonna go up there and hopefully see some high thing or something. Yeah, well, we were told at the, at the last campground that we were at in Benson, Arizona, about Airport Road and that if you go all the way up to the top, the views are very expansive and, and beautiful. So we're just gonna drive up there and see what we can see. It's kind of difficult when you're looking online to figure out where the vortexes actually are. Um, yeah, it's not like you can just Google it and find, oh, it's here and here's how you get there. Well, or there's, there's conflicting information online about it. But this one was pretty easy to find out of the other ones we went to. And that's why we picked it, because we could find it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a curvy road, but we, we drove in the dually, no problem. And then when you get there, there are actually signs for a big parking area and you pay three bucks to get in per car load, not per person. The trail itself is called Sedona View Trail, and it actually, for a long while, goes kind of parallel to the airport roads. It was very rocky and lumpy. We walked for, gosh, probably about 20 minutes, took some pictures. I don't think we quite got to the actual vortex itself because we got hungry. That's true. There was a vortex in our stomach. <laughs> You could see all of Sedona from above. There's no, there's really no lack of really awesome scenery in Sedona. We went down Airport Road and we found a restaurant. Mm -hmm. It was called Javelinas. 
is another Mexican restaurant. They do Mexican food well in Arizona, I gotta say. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Parking was a little tight, a little more difficult getting around in Sedona, but it's still doable. Yeah, and we sat out on the patio and it was a pretty view, of course, because it's Sedona. Yeah. Size of my hand. <laughs> Yeah. Chicken and goat cheese enchiladas. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> oh. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I'll give it to you. I am super excited about this motorcycle ride. We're going to Droma? Yeah, I, this is a little town that I went to, gosh, 20 years ago, I think. And I just remember loving it. I don't remember much more than that, but I know it's like on the side of a cliff or a mountain or something. So I'm assuming it's gonna be a really pretty ride. We took 260 West to 89A. 89A, I believe, is the road that kind of goes through Jerome and out mm -hmm. the other side, right? Yeah. little bit of history behind that little town is it's a town that's built into the side of a mountain and I guess it's either the most haunted town in the southwest or one of the most haunted towns in the country. Eclectic mix of random objects. Here go. Yeah. <laughs> It was an old copper mining town. So in 1917-ish was when the news got out that there was a huge copper strike there and the population blew up to like 10,000. This town has seen devastation from fires, I believe a couple of times. Yeah. So it keeps bouncing back and that's why it's a very haunted town because there's been <laughs> a lot of deaths. Mm -hmm. And now the town is full of galleries and artists and shops and restaurants. Yeah. And it's just What's really the... cool to walk around. When the sun will kiss my face again You will stand out in the fields and call my name And bring me home to see the day Something's telling me to keep that flame But something else saying there's no such thing We just ate at Vaqueros. It was really good. I think it's the best meal we've had west of the Mississippi in like seven weeks. I think you're cutting my head off, so what you're doing. It was delicious, so we're just gonna keep walking around and exploring. Yeah, the drum's pretty cool. Oh my god, it smells so good. 
Oh God, it smells good here. <laughs> I know. No. We have something to tell you. <laughs> yeah, you know we love to film our rides from multiple angles, but one of our biggest angles is what Terra films with the handheld. Right. And that got a big bug smashed on it. Mm, it got a bug smashed on it right away, it on our way to Jerome. <laughs> All that footage was garbage. I had no idea. We have since learned our lesson, and now we know to check the cameras after we've been out riding for a while, and we check them all and make sure nothing has killed itself by diving into our camera lens. I don't know if it, I think technically you killed it. The ride there and the ride back, we didn't get as much footage as we normally get. So we did decide to go back a second time. For you guys. For you guys. <laughs> so you could see the ride back to Camp Verde, which was the better, more picturesque, more scenic route back. Okay, I need some chaps. <laughs> I got a hood on, I got this on. I'm wearing chaps, fingerless gloves that are almost like full finger gloves for me. All right, let's do it. The road going west of there goes through some really good switchbacks and curvy roads. Yeah, it's, it's still 89A for a while, but it is a longer route home. But the first part of it is really cool. It almost reminded me of Tale of the Dragon and parts of it. Oh yeah. You always see signs when you're in the mountains, watch for falling rocks, and there's never any falling rocks. But this time, <laughs> there was some fallen rocks. Oh my gosh. And there was a construction crew, they were cleaning it up. So it kind of makes you think, oh, rocks can fall. Here. Yeah, and being on the bike is a little bit more of a scary situation when you see those rocks on the road. Also on our second trip up, we took the opportunity to eat like we like to do. Right. And there's a restaurant in, what's the old hotel called? It's called the Jerome Grand Hotel, and the restaurant inside there is called The Asylum. And that's because the hotel used to be an asylum. kind of creepy really it is the whole <laughs> it's the just, whole thing is creepy yeah and i think people actually stay at that hotel because it's like a haunted kind of thing yeah i wouldn't like it but i don't like haunted stuff i ain't afraid of no ghost but <laughs> <laughs> and then after we had lunch we walked around the hotel a little bit that's kind of where we got the more creepy vibes yeah because there's like pictures old pictures of it when mm -hmm. it was asylum and, and then you, you see like the big metal doors yeah. that like, trap people in yeah it reminded me of the asylum in one who flew over cuckoo's nest kind of had mm -hmm. that vibe to it yeah but it was cool i'm glad that we got to see it and that was it for jerome for us since Chad loves the vortexes so much. That was so, I was into them. I was right? really into the vortexes. And he wanted, to, <laughs> he wanted to see all of them. I found another one. And I this, wanted to see whatever you wanted to see. Babe. Oh, see. I like to see your face happy. If it's got magical healing powers, That's true. you count me in. So we decided to find the Bell Rock, Red Rock Vortex Trail. This one was very confusing for us. We couldn't find it. We thought we had to go into this state or it was city a, it park. It was the National Forest. It was Crescent of the Moon National Forest. And we paid the 10 bucks and we parked and then we're walking all over trying to figure it out. <laughs> Technically you can get there from where we were, but it would be an all day hike to get there. Or you can just get back in the truck and take this road around a corner and then there's a parking area I was like, let's do that it was really pretty i didn't don't think that i was healed from it i don't even know if we we're in the right spot to be honest i mean we there's were. no it's not like there's a little well, sign that says vortex is well, here no but the whole area that whole area the whole was air, the, vortex. the vortexes are big okay correct yeah that was just a another fun little after work thing that we did while we were in sedona Gotta get out of here before it gets dark. Yeah, we've got about 35 minutes before it's dark. 
Plus, we gotta get food. Y yeah. I wanna get back before it gets dark because I don't wanna get lost. It was kind of a challenge though for me because it was quite a hike up. Today we're gonna to ride to Sedona. We've been there twice in the truck mm -hmm. and we have a pretty cool route up there through, was it Red Trail, Red Rock Trail, Red Rock Red something. Rock National Forest and Bell Tower, but I think it's Route 179 or something, I think. We'll, we'll find out for you. But it goes through um, like the village of Oak Creek and into Sedona and it's a gorgeous ride. Yeah, I said Sedona is just beautiful in general. Okay, are you ready? Let's just do this. We're going for a ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From where we were in Camp Verde, there's a couple of routes to get into Sedona. One is just amazing. It's such a beautiful drive. We took 260, which I believe is interstate, to 179. You get into that drive and all of a sudden, you're surrounded by the red rocks. It was beautiful. One famous place on the side of a mountain is that church. Right, Chapel of the Holy Cross. That, yeah, that child, was our yeah. first destination. Now this place is busy, and apparently mm -hmm. it's busy all the time. We happen to go on a Sunday. Probably. Yeah. Genius. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to a chapel on a Sunday. Right. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just wandering the ruins looking for a place to start. The place was really neat. It was, uh, you know, it's a chapel, so yeah. be respectful and quiet. And... Right. The chapel was built in 1956, and it is now on the National Register of Historic Places, and I guess they do still hold services there. Mm -hmm. We just... It went in the afternoon. Yeah. It's tiny, and there were a lot of people there, and we did film a little bit inside, but I kind of felt weird about filming inside the chapel. It just didn't quite seem right, so we yeah. just got a little bit of little footage bit of on the yeah. inside. They do have golf carts that can shuttle you up to the top. Mm -hmm. it, is, it, is, it is a little bit of a walk to get up there. The views here are just spectacular. It's yeah. amazing. We're going to go to Tlaquacapacapacap? Exactly. Artist Village? You said that exactly right. It did. <laughs> There is a section in Sedona with a really crazy name that we always forgot. I believe you pronounce it Talakapaki. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> it was a neat little area. It's like a little outside mall with a bunch of shops all connected. Mm -hmm. and we did get lunch. I can't even remember where we ate. We just thought it was so-so. It wasn't that memorable, apparently. Right. But then we walked around and checked out the shops and got a coffee and looked at snacks and stuff. <laughs> yeah.
when we were at the chapel thing, the parking lot attendant recommended that we take Page Road back. Page Springs Road. It's just a different way to get back to Camp Verde and there's a lot of wineries and stuff along mm -hmm. that route. We like wineries. We even pulled into one of the wineries and we were gonna stop and I think that's when everything hit me and I needed to go home and lay down right away. Yeah, with there's lime. Sometimes <laughs> we'll be out and it's just like, okay, I've hit my wall, I gotta mm -hmm. go. Yeah. And then you know, we just we roll with it. Pretty much happens every time we, we go literally somewhere. Roll with it. Yeah, we did. So we went into the parking lot and we left the parking lot and mm -hmm. we went people, home. People. Personally I like the ride into Sedona that we took better than the Page Springs Road route, but it's always nice to go a different way back. Mm -hmm. than the way that you came. It was a nice ride. I enjoyed that day. Yeah, Sedona in general had some nice riding mm -hmm. just because it was so beautiful. Right. The highlight of our trip to Sedona oh, yeah. was the pink Jeep tour. We're going on a three-hour tour. Yes. Three-hour tour. I knew he was going to do yeah, that. I can't help it. I know he can't. It's called Broken Arrow and Scenic Room Combo Tour. I think we're going to see some scenic things. Like this stuff here. Yeah, but up close. <laughs> yeah. We had an awesome tour guide named Kyle. He yeah, did a cool. fantastic job. He was funny and he did a great job of getting everybody that was on that Jeep to feel like they were part of a group together. He did an awesome job. Hey guys, I only have four jokes. That was one. I was only missing <laughs> Chad. I needed to show that one. <laughs> so welcome to Gilkin International Forest. 1.8 million acres of land out here, guys. Uh, you can hike here, you can bike here, you can kayak, you can mountain climb. We really had no idea what tour would be the best, so we chose the Scenic Rim and Broken Arrow three-hour tour. We thought, why not do both? Right. Turns out, you know, we probably could have done just the Broken Arrow, but... Mm -hmm. Because the Scenic Rim part was quite rough. The whole tour itself was a very bumpy, very rough ride. This was a technical ride. Yeah, oh yeah. It was We good. needed chiropractic care. <laughs> after after this Broken Arrow portion is a 3.2 mile loop and this is a trail that's open to the public so if you have a Jeep or a 4x4 you can take that on there, you can hike know on there, you're doing. Right, dirt bikes, know what you're doing mm -hmm. but it's public access. Yeah, They do rent razors and 4x4s mm -hmm. and stuff in that area. We weren't really ready for that, we do that later in Utah, we do. stay tuned. Oh, this, this is unbelievable. Yeah, this is worth the drive up here. Yeah. But it was just gorgeous, so I'm glad we took that one. And if Kyle says, give me your phone, I want to take a picture, give him your phone. Oh yeah. He took, <laughs> he took some great shots of uh -huh. us, so it was awesome. Kyle said I could drive. <laughs> ready? Baby, let's just pretend. I want to stay like this forever. I want to stay right here. 
Uh, Kyle was very informative and we got a lot of education on the history of the area, of the, the, plant, uh, life the, the plant life, some of early Hollywood's films that were made in that area. Oh, and yeah. he even pointed out on one of the rocks that we were standing on, there were three holes drilled into it. And oh. He said that's where they would put the tripod, Cameras, the yeah. camera stands, drill them right into the rock and you can see them today. They don't let you drill anymore. No. <laughs> and the stuff that we were going up was like this and we were going down like this and Kyle being the jokester would like stall the thing oh, yeah. out and would let, let us hang. Kinda Literally like, a, like this. Yeah. While we're here. Kind of like a roller coaster feel to it a little bit. <laughs> it was it, fun. It, I it was, was fun. fun. It was fun. Wow. It's a good one. <laughs> These are views that you're not going to get unless you get into the heart of the trail like that. Wow. We were pretty beaten up after that, and of course we were hungry. Of course. <laughs> so we walked right down the street to Agave 89 and got a margarita and some food and went home and went straight to bed because that was a rough tour. Yeah. We had a pretty action-packed couple of weeks in Sedona. Yeah. It was great. It. it was great to get out on Lucido yes. and have some good riding. Yeah. Keep watching to the end of the video for outtakes. That's where we mess up a lot. <laughs> Our next stop after Sedona is Williams, Arizona and the Grand freaking Canyon. We have been talking about the Grand Canyon since before we even got our RV and mm -hmm. neither one of us had ever been there before. So this was a pretty cool trip for us. Please subscribe. Please click the like button if you haven't already. Yep. Facebook and Instagram too. And check out our website, changinglanesrv.com, mm -hmm. where you find more information on there than just what we post on YouTube. We do special blog posts and things like that. Right. So check it out. And here come those outtakes. Oh. Yeah, we got one of those middle grounds. Should I stop? Should I go? Something was rolling back there. It's just, it's just wood. It's just wood. <laughs> Cutting off your head again. Yeah. yeah there oh. we go. So today we're going to talk to you. That's that was really That's bad. Dumb. Yeah, so this. Ah, uh, what is wrong with me tonight? I don't like. No, no, no. Get your shit together. Get it together, woman. Get Daisy. Okay. Daisy's like, what's that noise you're making? Oh, hi. Hi. See? <laughs> Do you, you make a motorcycle noises? <laughs> yeah. But if you're somebody like Tarek and only can, can only handle so much of a beat down. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not in the way at all. Shake off. I still smell that dog. Oh, man, did you step in it? No. We just ate at. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm sick of this. The day that we were there, we went on a ride. Okay. Bye. See ya. Let me know if you want to do the suit. That's my brother. We're not on. We're not live. That's my brother over there. <laughs> hey Daisy, you hey. want to come say bye? Bye everybody. Bye everybody. <laughs>